just one one day I would like to figure out how this microphone works because I don't know oh it's right here it's mostly yeah. just for looks apparently because yeah. it doesn't well, work you know we've seen that before <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the move to be honest mm -hmm. yeah anyway that was just my doctor he was calling to tell me that he's wildly in love with me oh. and he wants to run away together and, and I said okay but I've got to do this podcast first <laughs> yeah and he was like and you have a podcast <laughs> <laughs> you know what can I say I'm irresistible <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> here I'll just pause and nobody will even know that there was stuff cut out they can't even watch the outtakes of it <laughs> <laughs> yes and nothing has happened no time no has passed time has passed <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell because we both just said it. And what's normal when you're in a conversation <laughs> where no time has passed is for everybody to just acknowledge it. <laughs> That's so true. I've That's how my that. normal conversations every single day go. Mm -hmm. Why do British people have better celebrities than we do? Uh, I don't want have to have like... something. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. That's fair. Now that we've cause... disparaged all of the United Kingdom. Let's talk about the Emperor's New Groove. We've all seen it. <laughs> no, let's first do this. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is Women in STEM. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today, the STEM stands for Squirrel, Tiny Village, Emperor, and Yzma. Mm -hmm. I think you all know what we're going to be discussing. Because <laughs> we haven't said it yet. No, we have... This is this is a cold open. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we start? We could just go in order. First of all, there's a squirrel in this movie. <laughs> He's like a main part of the plot. A uh, surprisingly, it's like it's like you're watching Ice Age. How much <laughs> you think this inconsequent inconsequential seeming squirrel ends up being a large part of the yeah, the overall like a driving journey. force. Yeah. And He's two separate instances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, he's the main reason Cusco gets lost in the in the jungle. Yes. Or uh, main reason he gets he's chased by jaguars. Yeah, 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 yeah. The main reason he gets lost in the jungle is that he's incompetent. But then the secondary reason is that this squirrel notices his incompetence and is like, I can use this to my advantage. Ha ha! And makes him get <laughs> chased by jaguars. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Although first he tries to be his friend. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very sweet little moment, you know, but it's a shame Cusco's, Cusco's just a jackass. Yeah. 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 That's really and, that's his main problem. Yeah. And it's that's another fun arc thing we're too, gonna see. <laughs> is that he's so, like, he's he is an asshole. He yeah. should be so wildly unlikable. And you don't like the things he does, but he's probably one of the most entertaining main characters in any Disney movie of all, because he's just, he, he's just David Spade in the llama costume, you know? Like, I love it when they have David Spade be David Spade in every movie he's ever been in. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never seen him play a challenging character because he's just a sarcastic jackass <laughs> all the time. And, you know, no hate to him. Like, he does it and he does it well. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah, it's said. just fun to see Disney have a main character that's not like you know, perfect, and like mm -hmm. you know the he's only just... problems that he has in his life are because things are happening to him, rather than yeah. like with Cusco, the main problems that he has in his life are specifically because he's making bad choices and being yeah, a bad person, actively making his own life worse. Yeah, and that's yeah. a fun thing too, is because he recognizes this. When he has an argument with his narration voice later in the movie, which, by the way, awesome, phenomenal. More movies should do that. We should bring that back. Absolutely. Time and time again, he breaks the third wall. For thir the fourth wall, kind of breaks Whoa. the third wall a little bit too when he's talking to himself. Hey, I don't know if that's a term, but you oh, know what? No, there's a lot of this is a multi-dimensional movie. Yeah, he yeah. breaks the third wall when he talks to himself. I'm calling it now. But yeah, like you know, we have so many instances where he like is talking to the audience that moment where he like scribbles over pacha 
Because, yeah. like, yeah, Pacha should be the main character in this movie. It should yeah, be, like, he's this... he's a good person, and he's trying to yeah. save his village from, like, a tyrannical force that is yeah. just going to build, like, a an amusement park for themselves, ignoring the, you know, native people of the land, how interesting, how topical. <laughs> he should be, yeah, he should be the main character. He's a good person. <laughs> But he's not and the only one i mean everyone's confused by this Cusco also yeah he's like what's the deal with the focus I'm like it's all about me you yeah. know <laughs> it's it's really really good you don't very often have a movie where you feel like yeah we're on the wrong person <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but at the same time it's better for it yeah it's like it may it lets you know how it's a modem pumba felt in lion king one and a half yeah. Like, can we cut this? Boo, boring. Where, where's me? Yeah. Let's fast forward. This is dull. Yeah. 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 That's Stop good. Stop the slide. X out. Not this. Me. This one. Not this one. Me. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's good stuff. <laughs> It's also really fun too because right from the first moment you get the first second of the movie you get the perfect idea of who this guy is when you have the super high dramatic wailing violin note it goes and then you have thunder and lightning you're like oh okay i know what i'm in for it's not like gonna be it, you can tell that it doesn't take itself seriously but it's wailing it's so dramatic it's like you know Mm-hmm. and that's exactly mm-hmm. who Cusco is yeah he is he's very dramatic and the movie itself is self-aware without being like annoying about it which is nice yeah yeah because you can be like you can throw a little wink to the audience sometimes mm-hmm. it's just when that's all you do without going that's... full Joss Whedon yeah Stop. Look. without going I full think we said his... more, I should have said thank you I think <laughs> yeah. we've said his enough on this channel yeah, it's like a Bloody Mary situation. You're like, <laughs> no, <laughs> stop. stop it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and yeah, it's fine exactly. too because, like, every, oh, sorry. No, 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 no. You, you go. No. Yes. And just how Cusco sets up the situation as the most unreliable narrator. And again, I can't think of another Disney movie where we really have an unreliable narrator. Mm -hmm. But everything that you see on screen is immediately contradicted by what he says. You know, like, I'm a perfectly nice guy and people just ruined my life for no good reason. And you're like, you know, you're like, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, first of all, that's David Spade. I know he's full of it. (laughs) But second, you're (laughs) like, it immediately sets you up to be like, oh, okay, what's this guy done? You know, like, you know it's his own fault. And right, it's so right, fun right. To see, like, You're like, how goody. is he going to twist this narrative to be pro him, even though it's like, he's obviously yeah. the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. I also like the the vibe then of having Yzma, who's like, so like, on paper evil. She like, has every attribute of like, this is like a villain. This is like a evil mad scientist crazy person villain so power hungry right but then it's like Kuzco is also the bad guy so I like that dynamic of like having two bad guys who are not at all the same in personality or you know (laughs) their looks or their (laughs) ideas of how to rule the you know it's it's interesting yeah and it's also not really about, like, the power to rule the country. It's just that she's pissed at him because he fired her. Yeah. Like, and not even the way, it's not even the fact that he fired her either. It's the way that he fired her, which was just so careless. Yeah. And, like, petty. And she's like, it, I've it's... been working here three times as long as you've been alive. And he's like, yeah, that's the problem. Like, Because he's such a little bitch. Yeah. He's so, like... He's, the he's 19 character, years old. He's so he unlikable. Knows everything. Yeah. And obviously, everybody else is wrong. Because how yeah. could he be wrong? He's the, he's emperor. the emperor, and at only 19, that's obviously like because he lives in a meritocracy and not a monarchy, right? 
It's so it's good. Yeah, what a loser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that his main motivation later is realizing that he is wildly unlikable and he doesn't have any friends. Mm-hmm. And it hits, you know? Like it takes him a while to realize it, but once it finally, you know, like it doesn't feel empty. Like he's had to progress a little bit to figure out like, oh yeah, no, that actually is important to me. Mm-hmm. You know, like I love the line between him and Pacha earlier when Pacha says essentially that and he says, thanks, I'll log that away. You know, like, yeah, he yeah. About friends. It doesn't matter. Like, that's not a big deal to him. But then the second that he realizes, oh yeah, no one likes him. Everyone actively like hated him and celebrated his death or like at least didn't care. That's yeah. when he realized like, oh, okay, actually I did like having someone care about me. That is important to me. And I messed this up it's me you know like but, but it's not like it felt like a very natural progression mm-hmm. yeah I agree and I think I like that the dynamic of him just trying so hard to not care you know this idea of like a, a separation between him and everyone else or like a stoicism or something like this where he's like I am kind of above all this mm-hmm. emotions are for dumb people and I have you know <laughs> I've transcended the right. need, the need to be liked I don't care about being liked I like me and I'm gonna build a giant swimming pool on top of your house that's my birthday gift to me that's my birthday gift to me I'm so happy <laughs> such a loser and at the end like that level of compromise or he's like maybe I could just go like one hill over right mm-hmm. and so it, instead of like destroying the village where like these people live and they have nowhere else to go right he's instead maybe boosting the economy he builds the place one place over then they have you know they can travel for work etc yeah. yeah and he like didn't build a whole Kuzkotopia he mm-hmm. built a little tiny changing hut and just used like the natural water slide that was already there you know yeah like he doesn't demolish anything he learns to work with what he's got also yeah. just real quick he threw an old man out a window yeah he kind of forgot For to mention we just gloss right over that but yeah. yeah right out the window yeah first five I mean, minutes not him because he has little scrawny little arms, but one he of his can't lift. guys did. Yeah, he's got the yeah. I mean, at least the little man survived. Yeah, that's true. He lives. It's not the first the time tail. he's thrown out the window, and it won't yeah. be the last. It won't be the last. Mark my words, it won't be the last. <laughs> uh, that's a chuckable guy. That's that's a throwable, throwable he, little man. He's so used to it too. You can tell when he's hanging by the banner when Pacha comes to get him. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Hey, could you hand me my shoe?" I'm like I'm fine. I'm good, but like, yeah, hey, yeah. he'll throw you out a window. Be careful. Yeah, <laughs> like, watch out. Fair warning. I don't know if you've off. been up there before. I have. Let me tell you, <laughs> they're going to throw you out the window. <laughs> Almost guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah, Isma's character introduction is great. Uh, Cusco's so fantastic. Is, she's she's just kid. so creepy. She is wildly she's scary. Like, she's worm tongue, you know, where you like take one look and you're like, okay, that's obviously an evil advisor, evil. slimy intentions, and she's like, but she also is kind of fab. <laughs> it's such she's a good like, balance. She it's a because she's bit. Eartha Kit. Like you're not gonna, you, it's impossible to cast Eartha Kit in anything and have her not be like a little bit glamorous, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like her role is like the old kind of magician lady in holes Mm -hmm. where she's wearing like all those beads and she's got her hair like wrapped up and she's sitting there smoking her pipe and you're like is this woman supposed to be creepy because she's like serving yeah she's actually like cool as hell (laughs) sorry (laughs) i said it (laughs) (laughs) like that one mike mike video like he ate just that one thing (laughs) (laughs) yeah except she's like eating everything you know yeah she's eating everything She's like kind of serving a little bit because she mm-hmm. she's got like she's got fit changes. She's got like ten little fit changes. She wears mm-hmm. her heels out into the jungle. She wraps her scarf around her head, like mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. She's 
she has she, her was... entire wardrobe besides her like lab coat and got like safety goggles is like cocktail dresses cute little like headdresses like uh-huh. <laughs> all the most vibrant the royal purple you've mm-hmm. ever seen mm-hmm. and, and speaking like... of serving you seen Kronk? <laughs> yes that guy can His... make and eat a spinach puff my friend <laughs> probably the funniest character maybe in the whole of disney's like rolodex but he's almost awesome. certainly in this movie yeah because his introduction is yeah he just gets a new guy this one's he's cronk he's just here but then he's <laughs> he's just ken <laughs> yeah he's just ken yeah literally she's okay. everything he's just ken <laughs> They were the <laughs> blueprint for Greta Gerwig. It's Barbie twenty twenty three. He's so funny. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's just a he's just a large brick of meat. Mm-hmm. He defined the word himbo. That's so good of him. It was really Look good at of all him. The work he's done. It yeah. is a real benefit to society. Yeah. When he came around, and here's the thing: like, I like that he to get a little deeper in our analysis here. He seems like the picture of masculinity, right? He's huge, broad-shouldered, mm-hmm. and he's like, I don't know, he's like a henchman to another henchman, which is weird. <laughs> but he also, like, he likes baking. And, and, like, <laughs> and he was a Boy Scout, and he loves animals, and he's yeah, good with yeah. kids. He'll play jump rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He'll go, he goes out to play jump rope with the kids helping them in their distraction and overtaking of Yzma even though he's yeah. supposed to be her henchman just because he's like jump rope <laughs> he's a good guy like you think of like a a forest ranger stacked <laughs> to no end you're like that's a man and then yeah he's just like a little sweetheart he's a little goof and you he's got of, his own theme song yeah like what are his motivations yeah why is he with why is he there? Because she's so clearly evil, and he's like, okay, like I don't care. Yeah, he's, he's so not clearly the up nicest on the fact person that he, she's evil. Yeah, right. It's like, like he, he's an antagonist. He definitely is one of the villains of the movie. But like, yeah. he's not. Isma's evil. She's for sure like a bad guy. But yeah. like, Kronk is just kind of yeah. He's just kind of there he's the whole time. So clueless. Yeah. Yeah. He's so funny. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, and then, oh, like, the whole shoulder angel, shoulder devil thing. Awesome, awesome. To this day, like, because I know that's, like, that's, like, a common trope. Like, people always talk about, like, an angel on one side of the devil on the other side. But anytime somebody mentions it, I do picture it as the little cronks. Yeah, this is the one you go to. But he's done it better than that. No, not before and certainly never since. No. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Like when I mean, the their whole like they're... like one arm like push ups, and the angel's like, "Oh, no, I, he's got a point." Yeah, he's got a point. Yeah, he's gonna lead you down the path of righteousness. I'm gonna lead you down the path yeah. that rocks. rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> you know, when I can see them, like they make a point to tell you that later. Yeah, when he was like. What is he doing there? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, so good. Oh, and the Josh is awesome. Movie. He's like Job hearing like Ron Howard's narration <laughs> or like the sound of silence. Like, <laughs> it's happening canonically, which you only know because Job is like, yeah. <laughs> like, he's replying to. Which is so, it's the same with, like, Alan is the only one who can hear the narrator's voice in the new Barbie movie. Like, Mm -hmm. that's Once again, this movie is the blueprint. (laughs) (laughs) Greta Gerwig, she's like, now hold on, I think we could really, I think we could really do something with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. (laughs) yeah. Imagine watching Mystery Science Theater 3000 and also Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. And you're like, I have a deadline to reach on the Lion King. What if I just combine these? It's the exact same thing with Barbie 2023. Greta Gerwig watched Amber's New Groove and was like, I have a deadline for Barbie. This is 
genius. <laughs> Have you seen Kronk? He's Ken and Alan. <laughs> Fusion is just a cheap tactic to make weak gems stronger, and she separated him out to his two main parts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good. I can so completely funny. imagine, like, he'd be like, my job is beach. Kronk would say that, you know? 100%. Completely like, believable. What would, it, what would he say his job is here? Like, my job is hench. Yeah, probably. He's, he's a henchman. To, he henches. He henches. That's his job, is to hench. He's a henchman, a man who who can hench. <laughs> and boy, can he. <laughs> and oh, boy, can he. So he's, true. He's loyal. He's the guy. He can hench. Until yeah, he tries to kill you. says to Jesse, I had a guy, now I don't, you are not the guy. That would never happen to Kronk. He's the guy. <laughs> Kronk was the guy, my cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a guy, but now I don't. He went down to Peru to work for some clearly evil lady. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Her skin was purple or something. It was really weird. Jeez, that's so good. I think her and Walter collabed at some point. Yeah, the two most <laughs> evilest people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> He's so vile. What a bad dude. And that's another, like, just a little sidetrack. Speaking of characters that you know are vile and you shouldn't like them, but there's just something about them that you're like, I like this guy. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, I can feel for this guy. Emperor's New yeah. Groove may also have been the blueprint for Breaking Bad. Who can say? <laughs> <laughs> The inspiration, at least. I mean, everyone's got to have a starting point. Yeah. Yeah. And that starting point probably should be just watch The Emperor's New Groove. I think just in general, it's everything they've done. First of all, the character design, they based at least around the voice actors for the characters, which I love when they do that. Mm -hmm. I love when they do that. I mm -hmm. go crazy for that every time. Because I always look Pretty at him, I'm cool. like, that kind of looks like that one guy. And then I look it up, I'm like, oh, because it is that one guy. You're like, this has the voice and build of Patrick Warburton. Yeah. Because there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's Something funny. I like about him, too, is that he's, like, a pretty well-known, like, voice actor. But he does his own voice every time. Yeah. And yeah. not he everybody can do that. It's not always cool when people do that. But for him, it's cool. Yeah. Because he's got a distinctive voice, mm -hmm. and he makes it work for every character he's ever done. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, every character, I'm like, yeah, that's his, that's that guy, but also that's the guy he's doing, you know? It's yeah, not ever yeah, like, yeah. it takes me out of the story. Like, I, I listen to Kronk, and I'm not like, oh, yeah, whatever, this guy again. It's like, that's Kronk. But I listen yeah. to another guy, I'm like, that's, you know, that's not Kronk. You know, it never bleeds over. He just, he always, because mm -hmm. he's a good voice actor he can only do the one voice but he acts very well with he's it he's an actor yeah yeah it's really good it's really nice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's the same i think with you know maybe not john goodman john goodman has a very very wide range and eartha kit as well but david spade mm -hmm. as well he does the one thing and he does it well he's a sarcastic guy he's got like a lot of caustic wit i'll say <laughs> <You know? laughs> and that's that's he works very well with it that's why you don't see him do many voice roles because that's all he ever really does mm -hmm. but that's okay because it works well for Cusco. it does Cusco is like a self-important better than everyone mm -hmm. very smart intelligent person but like also really stupid <laughs> you know and that works very well for what david spade does so I, every voice actor in this movie killed it they knocked it out of the park oh, perfectly cast really really well cast and well performed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i also think it's really cool how this movie got made at all because mm -hmm. have you heard that thing about how the official script for the movie was only finished two weeks after the movie was released in theaters yes yeah i did hear about that yeah. so much of it was like improvised and reworked um which doesn't work a lot of the time yeah no somehow in fact, they just had like the perfect storm of people working on this movie where they could yes and each other perfectly right and it creates yeah. like this really engaging and entertaining movie interesting characters like the art is really cool it's fun to look at and fun to watch the music is nice mm. like when would that ever have happened this is like the only instance in which this has worked so well 
Yes. And they release the movie and then they're like, oh shoot, oh crap, we gotta we write We never down finished the, the script. We never wrote down the script or too much of it was jazz. <laughs> so <I have> to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so look, good. if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. A story really only works if you have the ending figured out before you make the beginning. Mm -hmm. This is the exception that proves the rule. This is the only time, yeah, that it's ever worked this well. And like and how? so well. How? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing about it makes sense to me. Everything about it seems so meticulous. But it's like mm -hmm. it's like a Bob Ross painting, you know? Some, he's just kind of slapping stuff on there and then you blink and all of a sudden that's the most detailed forest scene I've ever seen in my life. Except it's not a forest scene. It's like an, an impressionist movie. piece. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's funny. It's random. It shouldn't make sense. And it certainly shouldn't work as a whole. But it does. The last scene that is where Kronk and Yzma, they fall off the map, and they're like, by all accounts, it doesn't make sense. That's the whole freaking yeah, movie. By all accounts, movie. it should not exist. But it's so, it's so good. And I love it. In that scene right before that, you know, where he's, he pulls down the map and shows yeah. how they traveled. I like how when they're traveling, it shows the red and purple yeah, and they look to down mark their paths, like, like, on the ground. That's funny! <laughs> It's really good. That's like it's funny. a really nice visual gag, and you know that like one artist late at night was like, "Hey, what if we do this?" And their team was like, "Yes, that's hilarious." That's funny. Gave them the green light, and they just went ahead and did it, and it's awesome. Yeah, like it's a perfect. Yeah, they have perfect like jokes that they say. They have perfect visual gags. Like the whole thing is so funny. Yeah, it, it does seem like they worked really hard to make it cohesive with a specific script instead of like the other way around. Yeah. Like, off of the final product <laughs> it's incredible like genuinely and i would never recommend going into a story with this mindset <laughs> yeah because how many times has it worked out like just this time maybe? literally one single time <laughs> it's the emperor's new that's the only time every other piece of successful media you look at it and you think wow i wonder how long it took them to figure out that story so freaking long so freaking long you look at avatar that's one of the greatest stories of all time they had that story figured out like miles before they even started it you know what i mean yeah like at this one yeah, they have a cohesive theme it all none of the jokes feel jarring or out of place but the emotional moments don't they they fit exactly where they're meant to be mm -hmm. like isma's when she calls back to She's like, think of it as we're taking you in your life in a new direction. And like, you know, it, it gets real close on his face and the music and you feel like hollow. You're like, oh. and then Kronk cuts in. He's like, hey, that's kind of what he said to you. And like, you like know, it doesn't uh -huh. bring the scene to a screeching halt. But like, you know, you still feel the emotion. But at the same time, you have the fun little gag. And like, yeah. So good. This, Pacha, his family. That's slamming. His yeah. wife is, the f like, she's awesome. She's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's great. I love how she's just so, like, she's also kind of sarcastic, but just she's very dry. Yeah. So she's very unassuming in her humor, but she is, like, so funny. Yeah. Yeah, and I like how easy it is to get the kids on board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they have a plan for that. They're like... Oh, yeah, to get, like, an intruder out of our closet? Yeah, it's no big. And, like, no one's yeah, no even problem. kind of shaken they, by they it. They do about it. They probably have, like, a code word for every possible scenario that could happen. So then this one comes up, and they're like, oh, done. I got you. Oh, oh we got it. Yeah. Yeah, we're on the same page. Yeah, she's got the waxer warming up. <laughs> yeah. None of that, like, <laughs> weird, none of that saggy, like, bull crap about, you know, I'm not gonna put my kids in danger. He's like, have you seen them? They're freaking terrifying. He's like, <laughs> they are the danger. Yeah, are. <laughs> Walter White's scene not. was yeah, actually inspired by Pacha's kids. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so good. And that's another scene, too. We just keep calling back to it, but how, like, she and Kronk, she's like, come back for holidays, you know? She's like, come back anytime. Like, they form a real friendship Yeah. while they're also terrorizing Yzma. <laughs> like, yeah. She's so old, she could die at any moment, but they're like, mm, you're being a little weird. So, you know. Caught her out at 100 miles an hour down a hill. 
So you know she's only going to get faster. Absolutely barreling to the bottom, and Kronk is like, so ah, so good to see you again. <laughs> That's not. Let's not wait until the next family reunion. Yeah. <laughs> This has been a hoot and a holler. So good. It's Let's not wait until the next family reunion is such a funny line to me because they have never met before. They've never waited for a family reunion to get together before. They're not cousins. <laughs> like, but Isma, that's their that's their cover story, right? Is Isma's like we're you know great great cousins once removed or whatever, and Kronk's like okay, he's like ah, family. he just he just thinks he's learning new information. <laughs> he's fully he's like oh I didn't know that I have cousins out here. And then Isma are not related either. No. <laughs> he's her secretary. <laughs> she hired him. And he's like, oh, cousins? Bet. Okay. <laughs> they knew the second he said, I'm not breaking down this door. It's hand-carved mahogany. Like, that's, that's quality. It's yeah, so quality. Yeah. Everything about this movie, every joke hits. It's, you know, it's funny as a kid. It's funnier as an adult. Mm-hmm. It's an 11 out of 10 on every front. I agree. I fully agree. Mm-hmm. I like that he's um, going back to the mahogany thing. He's not so reckless as to just destroy things because he can. That's something that bothers me so much in like a lot of like action movies. You know, they have like a car chase and it seems really cool. Like I would love to love car chase scenes. But the issue is that they're crashing into, like, 20 different cars, driving through houses and fruit stands and all this stuff. Like, who's paying Mm -hmm. for that? (laughs) Yeah. Insurance doesn't cover this. Imagine living in New York City. No. And so your rent is already astronomical. You're struggling to survive, and then you, like, walk out of your workplace to get into your car to go home. Because you live on the outside of town, because you can't afford to live in Manhattan. And your car is exploded. And you're like, again, dude? Because it's the sixth time this year. (laughs) Like, why does Tony Stark with his billions of dollars keep funding the Avengers instead of funding the, like, you've unhoused people. Look, and... That's your fault. If they they really understood his character, that's what they would have done in the movies. But Mm -hmm. Marvel has never done any of their characters justice. And they'll oh gosh, have and to even when you think that. they will, and you have hope, and you're like, Captain America's kind of cool, and then they just completely destroy his character. No, no, yeah, yeah, no. I I refuse to imagine living in New York, so mm-hmm. I won't picture the scenario you described. Um, no, that's just for listeners. You don't. I would never put you through that. And I appreciate that. I imagine that living in New York is like. <laughs> oh, sorry. Like the sound of a gun cocking in a parking garage. <laughs> yeah. Like, where are you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's got to be fun visually, but yeah, you got to think about like, okay, the consequences. Or like, it drives me crazy in movies where they desc- destroy like historical things. Mm-hmm. You know, like when they're running around in Italy or like Rome or France. And they're knocking, even Doctor Who is guilty of this, you know, first season back in 2005, when they like knocked into Big Ben, that hurt, Mm -hmm. that hurt deep down, you know, I'm like, oh, you can't be doing that. You're like, hang on, hang on, hang on. That guy's famous. (laughs) (laughs) Every person whose nickname is Big and then their name is named after Big Ben. All right, show some respect. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's. That's crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's nothing you can do. You can't fix that. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe you can on the surface, but it's never going to be the same. I don't care what ship Theseus says. Like, it's, it's you know, it's not the same. It's not the same boat. Mm-hmm. Big Ben, he's, he's That's dead. Not on that. <laughs> and you killed him. <laughs> and you killed him. <laughs> Big Ben is dead. And Christopher Eccleston playing the doctor in 2005. Put the nail in the coffin. Yeah. Of course, he has nothing but my respect. No man yeah. hated this scene more than my man Chris Eccleston. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good guy. He's, he's a hero to me. Yeah, I agree <laughs> wholeheartedly. <laughs> <laughs> he was just uh, doing his job, is the thing. Like, we're not gonna. No, yeah. It was in the no. script, it was CGI Big Ben, everything's fine. Oh, yeah. No, just to clarify for other people, it wasn't real Big Ben. 
They yeah, that guy's that under for... construction for different reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That wasn't no, they... our boy Chris. He would never do that. <laughs> I know, like England would do a lot for Doctor Who, but I don't. They'd really. I don't think they'd really do that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I can't say we'll cer- for certain. I mean, maybe these days, but back in two thousand five, when they were just rebooting the show, it was a little too soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They gotta. You gotta rebuild an audience. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> This is stupid. It is. I don't. <laughs> yeah. We've gone off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How unusual, too, because this never happens. No, I can't think of a single time that we've talked about the world of El Dorado for 20 to 30 minutes while we were supposed <laughs> to be talking about Jurassic Park. Okay. Or anything like, like that. I listened to that recording and I don't remember saying any of those things. <laughs> I have no memory of it. I That's my voice. And I remember the Jurassic Park conversation yeah. after it. I like. I think I went. I fu- my eyes fully blacked out. <laughs> I went on an El Dorado tangent for. Tw- I don't like. I must have come from a deep part of my soul that I'm not aware of because I have no memory of it. <laughs> still, yeah. and it's still like it's a good movie, but I just I haven't seen it that much. Probably like once or twice. I don't have that much to say about it. Like it's not like this Emperor's New Groove. It's like, mm-hmm. I, I could talk about that for hours, and I am. But yeah. El Dorado, like, yeah, it's I don't, yeah it's one it's, of life's I, unanswerable I, questions. <laughs> it really is. Uh, Emperor's New Groove. I also, you, you're familiar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of that okay. one. That's the one where there's a guy, they give him poison that's supposed to... But instead, he turns into, like, an animal. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, um, he turns into, like, an alpaca. Yeah, something like that. Or yeah, like a, yeah. Yeah. Because he's, he's supposed to be dead. Oh. But, yeah. I see. Nothing so that's, wrong. like, if the movie was from the bad guy's perspective, that would be kind of the main conflict. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, I see. Mm-hmm. And maybe they try to kill him in a different way. And again, I haven't seen it in a while, so I'm a little bit rusty on it. But I think they, if it were me, you know, and I tried to kill my enemy, it didn't work. I'd get my henchmen to try and, like, finish him off another way. Mm-hmm. Well, you yeah, because and... you can't have him running around telling everybody what happened. No. It would be a disaster. Because, no. again, he's supposed to be dead. He mm-hmm. he would know that I tried to kill him. Can't mm-hmm. have that. No, no, no. No. Gotta get That'd my handy henchmen to take care of it. Unfortunately, he's a little bit incompetent. So I don't know if he'd be able to, like, take it all the way. But, you know, that would give me a start, at least. Yeah, that's true. I think probably to ease some of that conflict, you could give him, like, really specific instructions or something. Oh, that could work. Yeah, let me just write this down real quick. Yeah. Like, you know, the step-by-step checklist. Uh Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, maybe... Here's the thing, you have potions that can turn him into an animal, right? So what if you give him one that will turn him into a flea, and then you can put that flea in a box, and then put that box in another box, and then mail the box to yourself. Yeah, Ooh. throw them off. Mm-hmm. That's a twist. When the box yeah. arrives, nobody knows what it is, but you know what it is. Smash it with a hammer. I've got a big wooden hammer. I know I've you do. Famously, you have yeah. a cartoon mallet. A Just cr- lying around. Cr- put it to good use, my friend. I, I mean, I like that plan. I just feel mm-hmm. like it would cost me a lot in postage. Well, not too much because it's not like global. You know, it's local. Yeah. That's true. It's just local. You just put, yeah. probably just put like one forever stamp on it. It could even be a small box. Cause it's only yeah, because I, I would only have to worry about shipping on the first, like on one box. I don't have to, we're, we're only shipping the one box inside the other box. Right. The so secret have to is that there's a second box for free. Yeah. So I don't have to put a stamp on that box. I don't no, have to worry about it. It's inside another it. box. You just need the stamp on the outside box, and it can be pretty right. small. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's plus, a... you're going to be emperor, so, like, probably your stuff can just be expedited without you having to pay the fee. Oh, that's so true. Yeah. Yeah. If not, yeah. probably put that into law. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, that'll probably be the first thing I take care of. Because yeah. I'll have to wait until after he's dead to, like, make the move. Mm. You know, but because I'm the second in command, no one... Like, I don't think it'll be that hard. So Right, 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 right. 
yeah maybe yeah. give it give it like a couple days grace right actually like, his birthday's coming up so that would give me a good like buffer period to like mm. you know spread the word that he's dead he's you know no longer with us and then I could get coronated on the same day mm, I see yeah yeah I like, like I like two birds one stone funeral it's... coronation or... Yeah, people are, like, commemorating him on his birthday slash funeral. That's sweet and tender. But yeah. then also, it's a little bit twist of the knife that you get to be coronated. I like that. I like that. I, I'm like this. wicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you write down the steps, turn into flea, put in box, put box in other box. Make sure you yeah. don't have to pay for postage because you're the emperor. Then mail that box to yourself, and then when it arrives, smash it with your comically large hammer yes and this way i don't have to worry about my henchman ruining anything oh true yeah because he'll probably just if he's involved at all it'll just be like dropping off the I... first box at the post office right yeah or he's just there like as a eye candy kind of a deal you know mm -hmm. to make me look more serious oh mm -hmm. you know like i walk in with this big brick of meat no one's gonna mm -hmm. think i mean I'm obviously, like, in this scenario, I'm obviously evil. I'm obviously, like, I'm just frightening to right. some, to anyone. So any then you need something before. to kind of soften the blow. Exactly, if you're frightening yeah. to look at and he's very nice to look at, they'll kind of balance out and people will feel completely normal about the situation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I smell what you're stepping in. You picking up what I'm putting down? <laughs> it's perfect. It's a flawless plan. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, if that doesn't bruise you. <laughs> <laughs> I can poison him with this. <laughs> <laughs> and their poisons are glowing red vials. Yeah, they're really good. They're like hot pink bubbles. and Yeah. I like that the label, the skull label, is just a llama folded over. Yeah. That, that like that only works with a, a very specific art style that they absolutely nailed yeah it's so good it's phenomenal and again with an animated art style you could never do that live action i no. wouldn't even want to see you try it wouldn't even because it's sense. like it's comic you know it's like it doesn't make sense when it's rolled out <laughs> but you roll it back and you're like yeah i can see both of those mm -hmm. that makes complete sense to me like yeah of course <laughs> yeah i feel like Here's the thing, if they did it live action, you know it wouldn't be like a cool thing like the stage adaptation of the Lion King or of War Horse, you know, where it's like a a animal costume slash puppet. Mm -hmm. You know? If they made it live action, they would just do a CGI llama. Don't I don't please. I can't do that today. That's the harshness and cruelty of the world that we live in. If I were emperor, I'd outlaw the CGI remakes. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I understand. <laughs> it's, like, genuinely, my one of my worst fears is that they remake this movie. Because yeah. it goes against everything that the original movie was, right? Where it was like, a, a passion project and it was very collaborative and on spontaneous. the go. yeah spontaneous and then and now they're just gonna make the same thing again stop yeah. doing that except they're probably gonna strip everything that made the original funny you know you're not gonna have David well yeah because like they're... half the charm is in the way that it's animated like you'd lose yes. so much of the humor and they're not gonna want to have a mean main character they're gonna sanitize him they're gonna make him a little bit more likable he's still you know he's not perfect but like he's, he's not understood Cusco is not a nice person no, he's, he's vile not. and he active as we've established he he's actively ruins his own life yeah he's completely willing to colonize and destroy a village yeah just to have a, a swimming pool home. yeah like not, not even, even yeah yeah anything useful it's purely he's the most self-centered snobby spoiled little rat you've ever met mm -hmm. and they take that away from us first of all he's you know i don't care what disney has said about their first like openly gay character that man is a homosexual absolutely he's, that's a oh, gay yeah. 19 year old <laughs> you know mm -hmm. like one of the first scenes where he's like not you know dancing to his own theme song He's like turning away fifteen beautiful girls because he's like, 
mm, let me guess you have a great personality yeah like not my type and you could be like what is your type and he'd be like no further questions <laughs> like, <laughs> no further questions we all they'd know take that away or mm-hmm. they'd like try to cram in like the most vanilla gay romance you've ever had like first of all it's fun to have him like you know do you get what i'm trying to say yeah i do they would take they... issue with him being single and also being rude so they would try to retcon both of those things and yes make an impossibly bad movie <laughs> yes and what they've done with every other live action remake since they mm-hmm. they'd yeah they'd retcon every like i just hate everything about everything that they do mm-hmm. all the time i agree yeah yeah because the whole point here's the, how how can he have a redemption arc and learn and grow as a person if he doesn't start out bad because if he starts out here then here that's not like that's just fine that's like a day cool yeah that's normal that's where pacha is pacha starts out here pacha grows to here that's because he's already a great person yeah he just learns to like be even more forgiving and even more accommodating and even more loving with cusco cusco he's not even on the scale no he's like on a different scale he's in the other room He's a wholly different ballpark. He's mm-hmm. playing a different sport. Yeah. And for the team. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, he's terrible. He's rotten. Mm-hmm. Have more terrible characters or else. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, thank you for taking responsibility for it. <laughs> all I've ever wanted we can stop doing this podcast now (laughs) (laughs) I wake up every single day thinking about Mesquite Nevada Mm -hmm. it has such a special place in my heart I'm gonna start telling people I'm from Mesquite (laughs) I already I was talking about this with my coworkers the other day I was like what do you guys tell coworkers or what do you guys tell customers and they were like what do you mean I'm like what kind of lies do you tell them and they were like huh I was like you don't lie to customers (laughs) And I realize that this is just me. It is, but I it shouldn't be anymore. <laughs> it shouldn't be. I think everybody else needs to join in because it's so fun. I tell customers anything. I don't even know what I'm going to say before I say it. I'll tell them where I'm from some random place. I'll tell them my name is something random. No one ever remembers it. I've had exactly two customers who have remembered my name as they've walked out the door. They've said, bye, Whitney. Thank you so much. And I loved it so much that I decided I was going to start telling people different names. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was like, they got a little too close to me. (laughs) Got to keep that distance. (laughs) But like, I don't know. It's like a game to me. I, I would never lie to someone that I actually know and care about, about something substantial. But like, and I I like to elaborate a little bit, or exaggerate is the right word. Mm-hmm. I like to exaggerate a little bit when I'm storytelling. But like that's just how it goes, you know. Yeah, but, that's a, you have to lie to tell the truth. So you're telling the story, my friend. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But to customers, man, I I consider that I'm doing them a favor. You know, they walk in <laughs> and they'll have stories to tell for years to come about this one freaking random chick. Yeah. Who worked at a Carmi mine. Yeah. I'm doing this for them. I respect that. <laughs> I feel like we've said everything we need to say about and then some. Roof and then some. Yeah. Okay. The end. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>